build guide time once again then on the channel we are back with a PvE focus build for Scarlet Witch in the next few days when I find time I will look to do a PvP one because she actually completely excels in PvP she's really pretty amazing but it's PvE that we will be starting off with first now the format of this video will start off with an overview I'll break down the build in a bit more detail we'll then check out the skills I'm using and provide rationale as to why I'm using these skills and I'll give you some alternatives you can use as well we'll check out the potential I'll tell you what your priority there should be. We'll have a look at the specializations I'm using. We'll talk about the outfits. We then have the battle badges and the mega cards. And then we'll finish up with something nice and easy. I'll tell you which companion you want to use. But let's dive in. Let's start off with the overview first. So when it comes to PvE content in the game, it's really all about doing sustained damage and having enough defence, at least in my opinion, so you can auto the combat and do something else while the game's actually playing away in the background. So this build will be a mixture of survivability and offence as well. There's a large focus on getting as high uptime as you can as possible on the ultimate ability for her because it offers a huge damage buff and the skills we'll be using will be the hex skills by and large because damage wise they are the best options available. But that's a quick overview, let's go in and let's break down the skills we're using now. For the skills then you want to run them in the order I have here because this will be the cast order as long as you have enough stamina so the most important ones will be earlier on the list. Now we've got Witch Tongue and Reality Warp, recover up to 19.1% of your ultimate gauge. The next one here you've got another option that's available in this tree that's a summon that can be targeted by the enemy and it can actually cast skills that do debuffs. That's great for PvP, but I prefer this for PvE. So it increases attack by 5% for 5 seconds. Once you get a max 5 stacks for this, it increases your attack by 30% for a whopping 10 seconds. And with cooldown reduction, you can get this skill down to around about 12 seconds or so. So you can get really high uptime on this. We then have a Chaos class skill. It's down to you which one you use. The reason we use this is it synergizes really well with a specialization we have that allows us to get around about 100% max damage rate. And then from that, we can start proccing other specializations as well. So that's why we're using a Chaos skill. We move into Hex skills next. A few options available here. The one I'm using, this is giving me a high amount of survivability and low damage. So I've got a barrier, 40% of max hit point for 10 seconds. With cooldown reduction, it's going down to around about 11 seconds or so. So that provides you with a ton of survivability. If you need just a little bit of survivability, then you can use this one here. Slightly longer cooldown, gives you the barrier, but it does a lot more damage. It's doing over a thousand. If you feel you don't need any survivability, then you can go for Hex Lightning. This one here... With cooldown reduction, you're sitting around about 8 seconds and it does 1100 damage, which is really pretty amazing. The final skill we have here, this particular one, is Psychokinesis and Hex Illusion. It does a ton of damage, 1100 damage, and the guard break is the highest as well. But that's the skills, let's check out the potential now. When it comes to a potential, if you are main in a character, of course in time you would want to max everything out, but it takes a fair amount of time to do that. So I'll highlight some of the options I would focus on in the short term. I would go for attack first. She has a huge amount of attack damage, a whopping 2196 she gets, so she's got it available in all the slots, so that's absolutely amazing. I would go for crit damage as well, because the setup will be running, she'll have a very high crit rate uptime on it. And then I would also go for cooldown decrease, that works great with the skills that we've talked about a moment ago. So that's the potential, let's check out the specialisations. For the specialisations here then I'll point out the four that I would say work really well for PvE. Now, the two that I'm going to mention first, they're tied together, they are absolutely fantastic. These, it's Chaos Tear, that's on the right hand side, and Critical Chaos. So Chaos Tear increases your max damage rate by 67.5% for 5 seconds when using a Chaos class skill. It's got a cooldown of 7 seconds, so really high uptime on getting close to 100% max damage rate. Once you have that, and the reason you want that, not only for the fact that you'll be doing more damage with it, but it ties in with Critical Chaos. So Critical Hit applied to all skills for seven seconds after three max damage hits and that's got a cooldown of 12 seconds around about 60% uptime for all of your hits to be critical hits and as mentioned earlier on that will include all the missiles that are coming off your ultimate ability as well so that's pretty amazing now because we are stacking cooldown reduction to an extent with this setup I quite like Mystic Stamina, so recover stamina by 30% every 5 times a skill is used, so we're constantly casting our skills and this gives us some stamina back. Finally, because it is a PvP,
PvE focus build. I wouldn't normally go for this, but for PvE you can go for Essence Aptitude. That's on the left hand side. It increases all damage dealt to super villains by 30% for 8 seconds when using a Hex Energy class skill. And it's got a cooldown of 15 seconds, that one. But that's the specializations. Let's talk about the outfits now. So for outfits then I'll break it into non-regional and regional. So your non-regional, there's none that are really that great. And I feel this has been done on purpose to force people to potentially spend to get regionals. But if you were to go for a non-regional one, I would say the disassembled outfit, that particular one, you're getting attack, crit damage, and then you're getting plus six to hex release. It isn't the best hex skill, but it's better than the other skills that are available from your non-regionals. In regards to your regional, I leveled up the Zanderf and the Midgardia to try both them out, and the Zanderf without a doubt is the better one. So that particular one, you've got your crit damage of 34.7%, and then you've got your Hex Energy class skills going up by plus six, and that really ramps the damage up on them. So that is the outfits. Let's talk about the battle badges and the mega cards. So we'll start off here with the battle badges. I'm not going to show you the battle badges I'm using because the reason being there's so much RNG in them, the chances of you getting similar badges ex exceptionally slim. Instead, I'll tell you what stats you want to look out for in the slots. So slot one and two in your battle badges, that's your offensive ones. They can roll, or the, the rolls that you're looking for would be crit damage. That's your primary roll and attack damage. They're both fantastic. When it comes to slots three and four, that's your defensive ones. You're looking for dodge there, ideally. For slots 5 and 6, that is utility, you're looking for ultimate gauge recovery and cooldown decrease as well. So that's the battle badges, let's check out the mega cards. So I'll show off the particular cards that I am running here. I've got a special card first, I got really lucky on this one. So I've got crit damage, that's a really important fixed effect and it works absolutely great on her. Bonus stats are super villain damage and super villain damage decrease, perfect for PvE. The next one, definitely go for this. Ultimate gauge recovery is up at 14% on this. Max damage rate I don't really need, but it's got cooldown decrease. So that does work nice for her. We've then got a card that's not perfect for her because exclusive stat is for Doctor Strange, but it's got cooldown decrease and it's got dodge rate. And it's a decent amount of dodge rate on that 8%. So that's a nice card. We then have some super villain damage on this particular card and we've got cooldown decrease. Overall, it's not the best card, but I'm looking for some improvements. We then have crit damage on this particular one and cooldown decrease down the bottom. And then the final one we have here is crit damage and super villain damage. I don't have anything for the exclusive stacks. I took this from Doctor Strange. So still some work to do in my cards, but you're looking for the likes of your crit damage and your cooldown decrease and your ultimate gauge recovery and so on. But let's check out the companions now. So we'll finish up here with a nice simple section, Companions, the one that I would really strongly recommend as much as it can be hard to farm any of your featured companions, it would be Baron Mordo, it ties in with the high uptime we're looking for in the ultimate ability. So when he casts his skill, you increase your attack damage by 21% for 10 seconds, you recover ultimate gauge by 14% and you decrease his remaining skill cooldown by 14% so you can use that skill that allows you to regain the ultimate gauge. So it works absolutely perfect for her. So that is the, the build that I've been running on Scarlet Witch and I've been having a lot of fun with. Let me know how you got on this when you do try it out in the comments below. And in the next few days or so, I'll look to get a PvP guide for her as well. But thanks for tuning in for this. Stay safe. I'll see you all again soon.